please now give a warm welcome to Olympic legend and gold medalist, Jackie Joyner Kersey. That's how we do it, huh? <laughs> I would like to, uh, you know, give honor to God because I know where my blessings come from. And to be in a room full with so many people that have the same desire, the same mission, the same vision to see the Boys and Girls Club of King County, you know, thrive. And without you all, there is no way Boys and Girls Club, not only in this county, but across America, could do the things that we know that Boys and Girls Club do. So Lisa talked about it earlier. I came through what we call just Boys Club. And it was someone at that Boys Club, not just someone, the executive director, saw my male friends playing basketball and they always wanted to select me or put me on their team. And I was always on the outside looking in and not knowing that I couldn't come in. But the executive director said, no, come on in. And that made a big difference in my life from the standpoint of working with my male friends. And at the time, we just saw it as playing sports. But they were teaching us life skills, teaching us how to strategize, teaching us to recognize what it means to be inclusive, not to discriminate, because I was the only girl. But they didn't look at it like that. They said, come on in, Jackie. So as I started playing, and, and I think I was probably around age of nine or 10, I was a very young age. And, but that just was the beginning. I didn't know my parents didn't have a whole lot. You know, I didn't know that they were struggling to make ends meet. And my mom was stressed to me. She wanted me to get an education and she wanted me to get a job and give her a percent of my money when I worked. But anyway, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because things cost. And I had to learn that at an early age. And I got involved through um, really um, sports or running track through a community center. And I wasn't one of the best girls. And I wanted to be good, so I showed up every day, you know, trying to be the best that I could be. And I saw myself, if I was running, I wanted to improve a tenth of a second or if I was jumping a half of an inch. And that was my sight. And it wasn't until I turned 14 when I saw the 76 Olympic Games on television and I saw women doing what I was trying to do. And I went to my coaches and I said, do you think I have the ability you know, to make the Olympic team? And they said, yes, you have the potential. But I would continue to go you know, over to this community center where I would work with the librarian who taught me how to check out books, you know, and I tell people, I tell young people today, they be like, oh no, we just Google it. I said, no, we weren't Googling anything. We had to, you know, walk down the aisle, check the books out, and you know, and, and so and so. But anyway, but at that center, it became uh, real, real for me, because I would recruit my sisters and my next door neighbors you know, to try to run track with me. And because we were the cheerleaders and for our, you know, major league football team and, but, you know, they didn't really like all that running. You know, they said I was crazy and something was wrong with me and why I wanna do this and, you know, and I wasn't good at it anyway, but I was like, well, I'm gonna go, in, I'm gonna go every day, you know, because at that time I didn't know it would afford me the school of my choice I wanted to go to. Uh, being a part of the Junior Olympics and meeting people from all you know, walks of life that eventually we would try to make Olympic teams together. 
you know, and, and it brought me back to, you know, understanding my why and why that why is so important. Why I would grow up in a community where others would say nothing good comes from our community. By the time I'm 14 years of age, I'll be pregnant or I wasn't going to amount to anything. But it was so important for me to understand that the commitment to hard work, you know, understanding that no one could outwork me. The goals that I set for myself were my goals. They were my dreams. And I had to have the desire to see it through. I understood that why, but I didn't quite understand the why when different things would happen. And it didn't go the way that I thought the plan should go. So now I'm going through high school and I'm getting a scholarship. I'm off to college now. I'm at UCLA. I'm on a basketball scholarship. And being there, freshman year, everything is going great. I'm challenged by the fact that I'm being diagnosed as being an asthmatic. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? So all of a sudden now, I'm thinking they're going to pull away my scholarship. They're going to take away my dreams. But that didn't happen. Because the same night, something unexpectedly happened. I'm on the phone with my mom, and my mom was my biggest inspiration, my strength. You know, we talked about if any of our children would go to college, that we would graduate. And I'm on the phone with her, and I'm trying, you know, hard to not say I'm homesick, because I didn't want my mom to worry. I want her to know that I was okay, and things were going to work out. But then we got off the phone, and Within the next four hours, the wee hours in the morning, I get a, a call that's saying that my mom is, is ill. I need to get home right away. I'm not understanding what is going on. I travel from Los Angeles back to St. Louis, get a ride over to East St. Louis to the hospital, and little did I know that I would be faced with my mother being what we would call quarantined because what she the disease that she had was highly contagious, and little did we know, my two sisters and my brother, it was really hard because the more I understand what you're talking about, because as a high school, a senior, I wasn't able to see my mother before I went off to school because of different things that was happening in our home. But my mom gave me the inspiration to be the best that I could be. And so as I go over to that hospital and come to find out that my mom had contracted the worst form of meningitis and she was bleeding from every organ in her body. And within minutes, they pulled off the, well, I told them take her off the, I call it the breathing machine and to see what she breathed on her own. And that wasn't meant to be. So my mom, flat line and, and she was gone. She was 37 years of age. And I looked up, had to t figure out a way how I'm gonna help my younger, two younger sisters and my brother is older. And I wanted to go to where I would find love, happiness and people that would embrace me. Try to go to quote unquote, what they called the boys club. And this was in this was 1981. And it was closed. So I go to the community center. Padlocks are on the door. And I just start thinking, you know, where do the young people go? And so my thoughts from that point on was that, you know, maybe one day I can open up a community center not knowing that it, you need a lot of money and a lot of other things. <laughs> and so the only thing I had going for me was a scholarship. And it was very important for me to get back on that airplane and go back out to UCLA and try to figure it out. And so on my journey of just wanting to open up a center, connect with the Boys and Girls Club that the thought crossed my mind was that I don't need a building to help people. So I just started pulling in different people that can help carry out the vision and the mission. 
And I said to you that I always knew my why. And sometimes we question the why. And the question came when I thought that God had taken my mom away from me. But I had to learn to forgive because the forgiveness was for me. And as I stand before you, I stand here asking you, do you know your why? When the Boys and Girls Club or the Boys Club or the community center shut, the question was why? And I bring it to you. The why is keep young people off the street, make them feel a safer belonging. They can work with the different staff people, each and every one of you or a donor. And then some of you will walk through those doors and you will become a mentor or you will volunteer. That's the why. That's why we need Boys and Girls Club, not just, not only in this county, but across this nation. Because without them, there are a lot of young people that feel lost and they have nowhere to go. But when they walk through them doors, they walk through them doors knowing that they are loved and they are cared for. And so for me, I stand here alone, but I don't take the credit because there were a lot of people that saw the potential in me that I did not know that I had. And as I wrap it up, I wrap it up by saying that my philosophy in life has always been, and it's my husband quote, so I can borrow it and claim it too. I challenge you with it. Those that know why would always be those that know how. God bless you and thank you.